So thank you for attending, uh, as they said. First, uh, if you want to win that funny C++ hackable mini drone, uh, we are raffling it. So you only have to put your business cards in those boxes that those handsome guys are just moving. If you don't have a business card, you can just fill it by hand. Yeah? Better? Okay, now better? Okay. So I can repeat. You can put your business cards in there and you can get into this marvelous hackable mini drone in your hands. Um, it will be roughed on the on the talk from both ocean on next uh, tomorrow at uh, four o'clock. And if uh, the person that wins it is not present, we'll send it. Don't worry. Uh, well, let's start. They talked a lot about me. So I think I don't have to talk anymore. We can save some time. I'm a key developer and I have some experience in, in high volume data processing software. And I've been a consultant at Viking Software for the last three and a half years and working now in a machine control industry that also needs a lot of performance. So what we are going to talk about. Um, current machines have uh, multi-core uh, processors and we not, not just have can't do it, but just have to use all the power to, to, to be performant. If we do a lot of computing, we cannot uh, rely only on the main thread. So we, are, we have to, to use multi-threading. But multi-threading, uh, in the hands of a developer, it's, uh, it's the best. And normally, we tend to over-engineer. So let's try to make things simple. I will try to show who can we do things really simple and really effective. Uh, there are multiple approaches to, to do threading. Uh, it all depends on the use case. Uh, we can just subclass to a thread. It's a typical process in the background, and this is what, how it, everything started. But uh, this has a lot of uh, counterparts. It's uh, complicated. Uh, Bo will explain in a much longer and extensive uh, talk how, how can be done. It has a lot of things that can break the, and and make uh, debugging complicated and make uh, developing complicated. So there are other alternatives also with threading. For example, just uh, making a controller worker pattern. Uh, if you have to do something that's synchron to turn in a synchron, you need to control it in a thread. You can just put it apart and it will work out of the box. I will show you then an example of this. You can also use the thread pool and start uh, tasks in the background that you need to do just separate. Uh, you can supply the run runnable class and uh, do some, some isolated work and use the power of the remaining cores in your machine. And also you can use the Qt concurrent run, which is another alternative that you can launch any Lambda, any function to do some stuff. Apart of this, uh, the same model Qt concurrent has some templated classes, uh, Qt and so that are useful and, and really helpful to, to control the, how, how all the threads are working in the background. So let's start by doing. Uh, for example, we want to do some, I, I will make some examples. Uh, we want our user interface to behave smoothly, but we can do at the same time a lot of intensive computing in the background. So I will make, a, I will show you some different scenarios. One is a high resolution photo browser. Imagine that you have thousands of photos and you want to show the thumbnails. And uh, you can use QFilter and map and reduce to, to uh, stretch those photos and make small thumbnails. And the user will, shouldn't have noticed that you are doing a lot of work in the background. And the user interface will keep responsive. And you can do it also with Qt concurrent run, but I will show you which is the typical error that we do there. Uh, also, I will show you a control worker um, pattern. So you can make some code that is doing something in the background and uh, it should be done in a synchronous mode. It's a system call, it's a, some kind of file export, import, or whatever that has to be blocking. And you don't want to block your user interface. You can do it really easily and isolated and without any kind of mutexes and, and problems with synchronization. And uh, also, I use it. In some places, uh, it calls directly to global instance start um, some function or so, whatever, because uh, in, a, in an embedded system, they have an external tool that is doing something and you have to call it every minute. 
and you cannot block it. You have to uh, wait for an answer. So you can do it that way, and you will receive the, the, the signal that uh, something happened, and you can get the answer without blocking the user interface. And also, there is a, a way to, to make the user interface uh, behave performant and, and smoothly without using threads. It's just faking that you are using a lot of things. I had a real case of a customer that had a ready button list with a, a huge space. Uh, there was the, the, the front end for a combo box. When you open the combo box, you show a front end with a lot of ready buttons to select something. When they had more than 10 or 20 elements, it was really bad, the behavior, because it was an embedded system that was not really powerful. We changed that to an abstract item view with delegates, and now they can handle thousands of elements without any problem. It behaves smoothly, and the user doesn't notice the difference. They see a lot of ready buttons, but it, they have really one widget alone. So let's start with, uh, with the graphical stuff. Uh, this is the real code. I will show you then the, the result of this. This is only getting a list of uh, elements from a, from a directory. Imagine that you have thousands of photos. So first, we generate a list of, of photos, and we do that. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a function here that is doing the real work. I added a lot of stuff. And it's that the, the, real, the real stuff is the, that that's the, that call to image scale that is doing the, the loading and the scaling of the image. That takes a lot of time. Uh, there are Im images that take four, five, six seconds to, to transform. And if you do that in the, when you load the application, the application gets absolutely blocked, and the user says, that is a piece of shit. So you can do that in the background. You can uh, generate a function that does it, receiving just the file name and returns an image. And you can make that simple call at the end. There is a, that image scaling is a future watcher. You make a call to git concurrent map, and for each file, we, which uh, we'll call the that function, and we'll do that process. And this will be done in a separate thread, controlled by the Qt, and as much threads as, as possible in your machine. You can control also the maximum amount of threads. And if you don't say nothing, it's just taking all the possible threads you have in the machine. So this is the, the part that populates a grid that loads the images. And this is the part when you create the, the, the model for, uh, for an abstract item view. In the constructor, you just create a future watcher, and we connect the, the signal. Uh, for, a, for a result, when you, when you finish one of those calls, you receive that signal. Result ready at, and it's a, just an index in the, in the array of, of elements. And you can do that small work that is just computing which row and column it uh, has to be placed, and storing that, in, in that case, it's a hash. Okay? I store that, and I have the image, and I call that to change it. The trick of this is that this is running in the main thread, in the graphical thread, and it's really fast. This, this part is really fast. The other part is running in the background. And when you run that code, uh, you, you don't need to, to take care of the mutexes or anything, because it's, it's in the main thread. Nobody else but the main thread is touching that, uh, that uh, hash. And of course, as any model, you have the data method. And you have to implement the display role. When the images I contain it, uh, it will show the image the decoration role. And uh, for the display role, loading when the image is not loaded. Not be uploaded. I will show you how this is working. This is the real code. So, yep, yeah, yeah, oh, come on. Wow, it doesn't want to scroll. Yeah, yeah. This is the real code, and we can run it. Oh, it's moving a lot. Okay. What happens with my. Oh, now it runs. Okay. Demo effect. Okay, let's run this. You can see this is loading on the ground. I can promise you the images are really huge. And this is showing the images as, as they're rolling. No mutex at all. This is being just, yeah, the images, the, the application is not really impressive. But you can see here some statistics. The average is one second. The maximum time to load was close to five seconds. And the total time was 14 seconds. But this machine has eight threads. So imagine that multiplied by eight, and just with the user interface block. The improvement is really important. So the, 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 the user sees a, a good result, and it's really easy to implement this. No mutations at all. No synchronization, nothing. Just 
implementing that in the right way. I did it in another way. You can do this almost the same. Is this one here? And you can see that the scale function does everything here. I think you see it better that way. Okay, so we can do it also like this, but this one has a mistake, a possible right condition. Is that we are touching here the hash, and this is being executed in a, in a thread. So if we have bad luck and the, the user interface at the same moment is accessing that, we have a crash. So this is a, a wrong way to do it. Could be done, but uh, and, and it works. But uh, the race condition is there and could, could happen. This is one of the, the options we have to, to do things fast and easy. <laughs> Sorry for being fast, but I don't have a lot of time. Uh, talking about the control and worker pattern, it's easy to implement that in, in Qt. Just have to create a control object that has a Q3 object and a pointer to the worker and connect some signals. So when we start, we create the worker and we move that worker to the thread. That means that any signal or slot called from that uh, worker will be processed in the even loop of that other thread. So we separate the work between two different threads. And we just connect uh, the signal for, I put that name just to, to make you know. But come on. Well, the, the signal at the end that we cannot see now is the, the way to, to call it. So you call start blocking operation, and this will just start the controller, the process. You see the start blocking operation, the connection there, the start blocking operation, and process map. So on the worker side, we only have to implement the process. It's a stupid uh, application, just work, uh, waits for random time between. 0, 5, and 5 seconds. You can do anything, of course. And this is just emitting some extra signals because I wanted to show you in the user interface what is happening. But it's really easy to implement anything you want in an object that just has a process and does something that you want to do. And this also has a, a, really, a really funny or simple example. Look at this. It's not very impressive, but we will now queue some processes, up, let's say 10 processes, okay? And this, this can be happening in the background, and you can move, and you can do anything. The user interface is working. I can queue some more. And this is happening. It's doing whatever you want in the background. The user interface keeps responsive, and we have two threads doing something. In this case, it's stupid because it's only waiting, but you can do a lot of work, and you can queue and have a de dedicated thread to do slow stuff or queued stuff or whatever, or print queue, whatever. And the user interface can work in totally separate. You're separating all your code, also again, without any kind of synchronization. You don't need a mutex, you don't need anything. OK, there are two ways to do it. And combining those two methods, we can also do, for example, massive batch of processes. I mean, working in an application that had to deal with databases with a lot of information and had a huge amount of data uh, that can be done in batches because it was impossible to fit that in memory. And uh, computing something and storing the results on the database also. Um, I did even a more specific thing. I used plain old data, so no mm, containers, nothing at all. Just trying to hit the CPU cache so the processing is done as fast as possible. And Using a trick, if you, you if every thread is accessing only one part of that data, you can load everything, and every thread is working in a separate uh, part, chunk of that the information, and you don't need to synchronize anything because only one thread is accessing at, at the, that part of the memory at one, mon uh, one moment. So you don't need mutexes at all. Uh, the, the access to the, the way, of course, is normal sequential and the reading and writing. So that part has to be moved out of the thread computing. I cannot show you real code because it's a proprietary code. It will show some pseudo code is that like this. Just a stupid struct that had some samples in the past and was generating a forecast for the future. And well, you can extend that uh, this as you want. And just uh, a, a function that was doing some stuff, com computing some forecasting with the data and returning the best method to apply to that data to obtain that forecast. Just create a, a simple array like that. Look at data of 1,000 elements, load the data from DB, make a call, and wait for, for that bunch 
to be finished. And when it's finished, we save the data to the B. There's an error here. This is totally wrong, that part. This cannot be done like this. You have to, to access a, 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 an array like this, you cannot use it with a computer synchronizer. It was intended. Uh, if you do that, you are failing because you are accessing only the first element in a row. You have to do uh, another approach that is create a future, a, future, uh, a future watcher and add futures one by one, calling for each of the positions of the array, and you start doing UQ one thousand. Okay, <laughs> UQ one thousand calls, and you will process one by one. In the in each in each street, and as they you, uh, will finish, they will send the message, the uh, process finished, or computer added, or whatever the, the, the different signals that the, the computer has. And at the end, you have to add that future wait for finished, not not uh, that way, but more extended. With that, you can process a lot of data. And for example, one process that we had processing for twenty five hours, it was reduced to only three hours with a proper server and 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 a strategy like this. So we reduce it a lot, uh, the, the time of computing. Of course, this is a blocking call, the future wait for finished, and you need to put that in a separate fit. It's a, uh, a controller worker approach is the same. It's completely done in, in, that, uh, in that class. This is a way also to, to avoid any kind of uh, mutexes. We are not using it. It's just Choosing the, the right implementation or the right uh, data strategy. It's simplify things as much as possible. So you must always have in mind that, that uh, when you have a problem like this with a lot of data, a lot of information, a lot of computing, think it twice. Uh, think carefully about the best uh, implementation you can do and the best methods and keep it as simple and stupid as you can. Because uh, the, the, the piece that is not there is the piece that will never break. It was a phrase from a teacher of mine, with electronics, and he always was saying the same. If you can do it with a resistor and a condenser, you don't, a capacitor, you don't need to add a third component. So do the same with computer technology, exactly the same. Um, normally, having multiple threads is not always the best solution. So you can also do it in another, in another way. Uh, most of the user interface uh, bottlenecks are because uh, bad implementation or bad planification. So you can also do the approach of, of, of having a delegate and, and our implementation of some tricks to, to hack the whole we are painting things or something like this. But most of the time, if you want performance, you have to go that way. But think it twice before using the threads because it's a complicated uh, plan. Don't overcomplicate things. Just uh, use a simple solution. You have seen that this is a stupid code where they show, uh, we're showing, but that works perfectly and can handle a lot of information, a lot of uh, power of computing. And the simpler you do it, the better you will understand you or any other person that takes care of this, and the easier to be able to maintain. And just the, the base of all of this is that working with isolated threads uh, removes the problem of mutexes. So if you need to, to go to the millisecond, probably you have to go for a thread solution and um, just uh, deal with mutexes. But I've been in that land, and it's a mess. It uh, could take weeks to, to resolve a deep log or something like this, because it's a very problematic. If we can avoid that, Qt works perfectly with the signals and slots. And you can just separate in, separate, in different fits the, the work, and it's a perfect solution. And always consider, if it's necessary, to, I, I'm repeating myself, to uh, drive to thread class. So if you can avoid that, avoid it. And if you consider that you have to do it, consider it again, because it's, it's a problem, normally. And that's all. I mean really fast. Thank you very much. Any, any Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have uh, some questions for Jordi? Just the hand and I will hand over the mic. No, thank you. Everyone's good to go.